Hi, everyone. It's so good to be here. I haven't given an in-person talk in a really long time, so this is special for me. Um, I'm going to tell you about a project that I'm working on right now um, that is funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation around um, creating systems to help researchers, ethics boards, um, data access committees uh, do better by communities as they do their biomedical research. Um, so we know uh, from years of experience that when communities are involved in research, research is better. Unequivocally, there can be no debate about this. Um, from the activism of um, the early AIDS epidemic um, all the way into the present day, science has benefited from the input, from the energy, um, from the efforts of communities. And as we move into this big data science era, it can appear that we can do this work without communities. Um, and I am here to tell you that that is not the case. Communities are inexorably in intertwined, um, even with big biomedical data. There's no way for us to do this work without impacting communities, and therefore there's no way for us to do this work well without engaging them and integrating them into our work. Um, communities are important within big health data research in at least two ways. Um, one is that communities, um, as big data <laughs> inform on us, they inform on the communities to which we know we belong. Uh, you know, as a, a middle-aged woman, as a white woman, as a cancer survivor, I am impacted by the big data that is analyzed about those groups. And, and as a person who identifies as being part of those groups, I can recognize myself in the impact that those data are having on my care. It can also have an impact on us in ways that we have no idea <laughs> about. Um, so we can be algorithmically defined into communities, communities that we don't know of, don't acknowledge, wouldn't recognize ourselves within. Um, there was a beautiful example of this um, uh, that was recently described in uh, Wired magazine about a woman who had chronic pain issues because of endometriosis. And uh, she adopted an elderly dog, had to get more care for her ongoing chronic pain, and they said, oh, you can't have any more pain medication. And it was only because she belonged to a Reddit thread for other people with chronic pain that she found a subreddit about chronic pain and elderly pets, because when you get a prescription for your pet, it's in your name. And so prescribing algorithms said, oh, well, you're seeking drugs from multiple sources because your elderly dog needs pain medication and you need pain medication. And so she was denied care because she belongs to the community of people with chronic pain who have adopted or own elderly pets who require medication themselves, not a community in the way that we think of communities, right? And so, so big data are impacting us at the community level. Um, so what do we do about it? We need to build some sort of a toolkit, a toolbox to help ourselves um, as biomedical researchers, as the biomedical research infrastructure community to, to do better by these communities. Because I can tell you that none of my colleagues at Sage BioNetworks or probably any of your colleagues at any of your institutions wake up in the morning and think, how can I harm people? That's not what they want to do, right? We, we are not in the business of creating harm as uh, researchers. We really want to create benefit. So this is a big slide that my wonderful research assistant Carly made, um, which describes this three-year project, again, funded by um, RWJF. Many thanks to them. We are just finishing up what's important about this. We're just finishing up the first phase, the first year of this project, where we were conceptualizing what would a toolkit look like that researchers, ethics boards, data access committees could use in order to do better by communities. And we are entering into this design and build phase. And then we will get to the piloting part of it. So just sort of the big key takeaways is we were thinking, now we're going to build something, then we're going to test the thing. 
Um, I have a fabulous group, um, academic work group, that's been involved in this project, including Jasmine, who just spoke. So, hey, Jasmine. Um, I'm very, very thankful. They are scattered across um, 16 time zones, which means that people have to wake up very early and stay up very late in order to talk to one another. Um, but it's been really a fantastic group. They have been grappling with these sort of big conceptual questions about, you know, what is, what even is a community in a big data context? Um, how do we ensure what representativeness would look like? Like, you know, elderly pet owners who have chronic pain, like how do we even find these people, right? What indicators do we use? Is it a, con a ceiling or a floor? Is there a formal mechanism of consent or how could we even see a signal of consent from a community? We also have had four community engagement studio groups. So community engagement studios are a methodology that was developed by Consuela Wilkins and her crew in Tennessee. Um, many thanks to them, because it's a really robust and wonderful methodology. We have brought in community members as experts, so as co-researchers to us. We have four community engagement groups. One of them um, is a group of uh, people who self-identify as queer, one black, one uh, Pacific Islander, Native um, uh, American, Alaskan Indian uh, group, um, and then one group of people with genetic conditions. So BRCA mutations, Lynch mutations, sickle cell, you name it. So they've been meeting as well and doing a lot of conceptual work. Um, and that work has been online, so they've been using um, Miro as a way of brainstorming and talking. They've met seven times for an hour and a half each. And they've come up with all kinds of different ideas around community engagement within the big health data research life cycle. Um, and I just present these pictures to you just to give you a sense of their meaningful and complete engagement. So as they as the academic work group has gone through these seven questions, so has the um, community engagement groups gone through these questions as well. And we have some really interesting observations. And what we're coming away from this engagement with is that there are tensions that exist between communities about the ways that they see these questions within our academic work group about the ways they see these different questions. And so rather than try to create a solution or solutions which resolve those tensions, it looks like we're going to be building a toolbox which holds forth the tensions. The tensions, for example, between the individual and the collective. The tensions between uh, representativeness and acknowledgement of community, right? There are many of these different tensions. So we're really excited about this. So we're building from that set of values identified by our community group, our community experts, and our academic experts to a set of requirements, to a set of specifications, which will then be our tool. So this is very you know, uh, value-sensitive design-focused thinking, right? And then we're getting into our pilot. And so I am here to tell you that we're heading towards this pilot um, in 2024, and I am looking for pilot partners, so researchers who'd be interested in testing out our uh, toolkit, IRBs, data access committees. Um, we have funding to support the use of that, but you will be a research subject or your group would be a research subject because we will be studying you using it. Um, and so I encourage you to reach out. Thanks so much.